In the name of Allah, God most gracious. Brothers and sisters and friends, I will give you uh, the format today. At first, Reverend Jimmy Swaggart will begin. He will address us for 30 minutes. And then Brother Ahmed Didat will speak for 40 minutes. And finally, Reverend Jimmy Swaggart will come back to the podium to address us for another 10 minutes. We thought this would be fair and just, and they both have agreed. After that time, you, the audience, will have your opportunity to raise your questions to these speakers. We will have one hour for questions and answers. Again, the debate. Is the Bible the Word of God? Let us, Muslims and Christians, be on our best behavior. May Allah the Almighty bless us. I bring to you Reverend Jimmy Swaggart. Thank you so very, very much. I'm so very happy to be here tonight. And even though this debate or these addresses are given by our Muslim friends, still this distinguished scholar from the world of Islam, Mr. Ahmad Didat, has come to be with us in our town and uh, I just met Mr. D. Doc this afternoon, just a few minutes really, I should say this evening. And he's one of the type of gentlemen that you meet and you like him instantly. And uh, I want all of the Christians here, and of course, I know that you Muslims will join in with us. And this doesn't count on my 30 minutes. <laughs> I want us to give Mr. Dugat a big hand of welcome of friendship to our city of Baton Rouge. He is a scholar, and I am not a Bible scholar, even though I am an avid Bible student. 
he was teasing my wife and I just before we came on and said, Islam allows four wives. <laughs> he just corrected me, said, up to four. I said, well, <clears throat> Mr. D. Dot, Christianity only allows us one, so I had to get the best on the first shot. <laughs> I am honored to be here tonight, very pleased to have this opportunity to speak a few words in respect to that which we believe to be the Word of Almighty God. I want to say something just before we get started. I have not known too very much about Islam. I do not say that with any type of pride, but I have to be honest. In the last few months, I have studied Islam somewhat, and I'll admit I've only scratched the surface. Back some, I guess it must have been about two years ago now, I made a derogatory statement over television about the Quran. If you were not listening that particular week, I'm never going to tell you what it was. But I apologize for that. And I've never done it since, and I will not do it again. Because I feel that... <laughs> it was not the right thing to do. And after that, I've made a study a little bit, as I mentioned a moment ago. And I've learned that Muslims are some of the most hospitable people on the face of the earth. And I've learned that you are extremely, totally dedicated and serious about your faith. In other words, it's not just a sham with you, you mean business. And as our distinguished moderator said a moment ago, the two most powerful religious influences in the world today is Christianity and Islam. And I want to say at the outset that Every true Christian loves the Muslim people. And I mean that with all of my heart. I have learned to respect the Quran. I've learned to respect the Muslims. I do not believe the Quran is the Word of God. I do not believe that Mohammed was God's prophet. But I do respect your beliefs, I do respect your faith, I do respect your sincerity. Time and time again, I have, before vast television audiences, I have held up this Bible or one like it, and I'm sure most of you have seen me do it. I have done it through television to 140 countries of the world. And I have stated this is the word of Almighty God. I have stated that there is no other word of God, and we live, die, sink, or swim on this book. I believe that. I believe it with all of my heart. But of course, saying that really is cheap. Those type of words do not really cost that very much. Now I want to start this out tonight by quoting a passage of scripture that Mr. D. Dodd and myself disagree somewhat over, but which is one of, if not the dearest, passage in the Word of God to the world of Christendom, found in St. John chapter 3, verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only unique son. Who's you there, Mr. D. Dot? <laughs> His only unique Son, that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And I want to use that as the basis for this simple statement that I would attempt to make tonight. I would ask us to bow our heads as we ask God's blessings upon this effort. Heavenly Father, as we come to thee, we ask that you would help all of us here to conduct ourselves, as I know we shall, by your help and your grace in the way that you would desire that we do so. 
that every word may be for thy glory, that we may say only what you would desire, in the way that you would desire. And I'll ask it all in the holy and the precious name of Jesus. And everyone said, that are Christians, amen and amen. There is no Christian that will say that God wrote the Bible. God did not write the Bible. To be frank with you, the only thing that I know of that God did write was the Ten Commandments on stone for Moses. That was kept the Decalogue in the Ark of the Covenant for many, many centuries. But God never wrote the Word of God, the Bible, man wrote it. The Bible meaning a library of books. Man wrote it as man was, according to Simon Peter, inspired by the Holy Spirit. Peter said, holy men of old wrote as they were moved upon, breathed upon by God to write that which came from God. God used their personalities. He used their character. He used their consecration to Him. He even used their idiosyncrasies at times. But He used men so that His great plan for this planet, for all of humanity, could be placed in man's simple words so that man could comprehend it and man could understand it. There is no book on the face of the earth that has had the factual criticism that this book has had. I, I sort of feel insignificant when I stand here attempting to speak about the Bible when I realize that some of the world's most eminent scholars have critically looked at every single text over and over and over again, sparing no expense, no time, no effort to ascertain if it was what it said it was. I have read the Bible through many, many, many times. And others such as I have read it many more times, much more educated than I could ever be, understanding both Hebrew and Greek. The first passages of the Bible were written about 3,500 years ago. To my knowledge, it is the oldest book of Revelation on the face of the entire earth. We believe that Moses wrote what is called the Pentateuch, those first five books, with the exception possibly of the last few verses in Deuteronomy. And he could have even written that because we believe that God, and I know Islam believes, that God is so powerful that he could have revealed to Moses exactly how he would die and exactly how that his funeral would be conducted. That would have been no problem for God. But whether he wrote it or whether Joshua wrote it, it was written about 3,500 years ago. And the entirety of the Word of God, as so many of you know, was written by about 40 men over a space and period of time of about 16 to 1,800 years, with the last book being written roughly 100 years after the death and the resurrection and ascension of the Lord Jesus Christ, written by the Apostle John. Now, it has been critically looked at, more so, as I mentioned, than any book on the face of the earth. It is very interesting to note that Yusuf Ali